took like 100 years for the US government to print a trillion dollars of US. It took 12 years to print the same amount of, of money, a tri another trillion. It took only three months last year to print the same amount of money. So again, linearity, not the same, 100, 100 years, 10 years, 12 years, three months. In a fast-moving and confusing crypto asset market, get an edge with Crypto Slate Edge. Enhanced, in-depth news coverage and extensive crypto asset and sector data are all part of your exclusive access as a member, helping you understand the market with features such as on-chain metrics and sentiments, all of which allow you to convert knowledge into action with an ad-free experience. As a bonus, access our private Telegram channel to receive live insights whilst engaging with the CryptoSlate community. Subscribe now at CryptoSlate.com forward slash edge. When you look at Swissborg, 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 Swissborg is sorti ce matin. They have an app where you can buy crypto. They connect to Binance, HitBTC, LMAX, and Kraken and find the best rates in the markets. What I like about Swissborg is that they have an amazing app that can directly buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also cash out as well. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. That is zero fee. Fees. If you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, I suggest you buy through Swissborg rather than Coinbase. And if you're interested in trading the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin, use Swissborg's application. To your crypto community blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the special edition Dubai Crypto Millionaires. Millionaires, not just a bank account, not just your ledger, but your actual mindset having sustainable habits, talking about investment, crypto, and all the cool topics so that you enjoy every single second. And today we have one of the most underrated, according to my biased view, people in crypto who's not in front of the camera very often, but has tons of gems to share with all you guys. Without further ado, a brother from another mother, Anthony Le Soignier. Hey, brother. How you doing, bro? Very good. We've been wanting to do this for so long, man. Finally. But time flies. It does. Time flies, man. It's, it's incredible what's happening these days. And I really want to kick off, Anthony, about, you know, your background in finance, because, you know, I know the early days you've had some rough times, some tough times, which built you to the Anthony of today and wanting to change the paradigm and everything. But uh, you have so many insights from traditional finance. Let, bring us back to the early days in finance. Sure, sure. So I guess, you know, my, my mind was always oriented to um, this field where you have to, to somehow manage um, random process, right? So in the very early days when I was a kid, my grandfather loved to play cards with me, right? So in the card game, um, there is a component about strategy, but you have to manage as well some kind of probability, right? You have to manage. And on top of that, you need to manage the behavior of your opponents. So there is both the random process that kicks in the strategy, which is how can I lead the game to winning uh, strategy, but as well the randomness. Because sometimes you're just unlucky and you need to accept that and you need to process that because on the long term run, if your strategy is good, it must pay off. So this is how I guess, you know, I was really passionate with that. Uh, then growing up um, as a you know, teenager, I was more involved with the gaming industry in a sense like e-game. So I was a uh, I was playing to this software, like this game that was called uh, Command and Conquer. Yeah, I was like top two, top top one in France, and nice. like top ten in the in the um, in the world. But again, you 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 need to understand the psychology of your opponent. If someone is from Korea, it will have a different behavior than someone that is in Europe, right? And all this learning feed me and lead me to a place where when I was a student, my parents were not that rich, right? And uh, 
Uh, but of course, being a student, you want to go out, you have a girlfriend, so you want to bring her to a nice restaurant. Uh, you want to buy a car that you can be independent, you don't have to ask your mom, right? Drive me there or there. And um, yeah, and <clears throat> because I have this passion for game and I have this passion for uh, po um, card game as well, uh, I study in genius school, so I always ask this um, analytical thinking, analytical mindset. Then I start to play poker online. Right, as a passion, first of all, it was, not, it was never about winning money, I guess, right? And, and I feel that people that I have met that, was, that I, I've been very successful in what they do, that is game, that is entrepreneurship, they never start with the thinking of making money. They start to connect with who they are, right, and what they like. Kind of like Bitcoin, by the way, right? The early people and didn't Bitcoin, think yeah. about making money, right? No, of yeah. course. They were here to they connect to something and they, and they stick to it, right? Truly. And uh, I find that every people that I met that are successful or um, biography that I can read, it, it's always the same story. It's about something, some, someone that believe a lot in something and, and stick to it. Beside the rationality or uh, thinking of the outcome of making money. Money come as a consequence, but it never been the goal. Yeah. And this is how I start poker, to play poker. It was truly intrinsic, right? It wasn't extrinsic in that it sense. Was, yeah, exactly, and I really like it. Uh, and at the same time, I was in engineering school, and the reason why I did engineering school is because I was good at math, and my mom told me you should do that, right? Because when you're young, you, you don't have really a high conviction, or you don't really see what you want to do. At least that was the case for me. Huh? I was more thinking of enjoying with my friend that say, oh, in that amount of time, I need to do that. And, um, <clears throat> So I've, I've done my engineering school, I've done very well. I study telecommunication, but at the end of my uh, five years um, life of, as a student, I didn't see myself being an engineer. Like I, I need this excitement of, um, that I found with poker or with games. I, I need this randomness and try to control this randomness or at least to understand and, and go with the, the, the randomness. And, and finance was a very good candidate, right? Uh, at that time. And I think as well, part of the money was the motivation or the fame, maybe. Um, and yeah, this is how I start my career. I, I work in Paris, I work uh, in investment fund. Funny thing is when, uh, uh, so I graduated in 2008, no, 2007, no, 2008, yeah. And, and actually when I start my first internship, uh, I started in the hedge fund as a, as a quantitative analyst and they had a massive position on Burstons. And Burstons was the first bank to go chapter 11 in, in the US. So that was really the beginning of the, wow. the big crisis that happened 12 years ago. So the first day of my first internship, someone told me we are going to close the shop. So you need to find another internship. No so yeah. Way. Bad so, start. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of a start, right? Um, and then I learned a lot. I, I had the chance in Paris to work with a mentor. I guess that's very important when you, yeah. when you start um, in something like so this. Instill the right habits, right? So that you don't do, you don't minimize the damage, right? Exactly, and you know, that's something that I tell to people as well. You can read books, um, you can go to a ton of trainings, but sometimes you can't compress the scale of time. So what you will learn by observing market for a year, right? Even if it's five minutes every year, right? Uh, for a year, five minutes every day for a year, what you will learn during this time will not be the equivalent if you compress the same time in one week or two weeks. Like if you constantly look at the market for every day for two weeks, which is maybe equivalent to the, to the same amount of time of looking at the market 10 minutes every day, you will not learn the same thing. So you can't compress scale of time. You need to accept that you need some experience. And that's why sometimes having a mentor that can show you the path, you know, accelerate your learnings is something extremely good. And one thing that you learned as well, it, kind of moving away from the mentorship, but going into data sets. I remember you had access to some really interesting data with an extensive amount of research that really opened your mind. And you told me that, I remember a few nights ago that that was one of the best lessons you've learned through data in terms of behavior, right? So, and then we'll go back to the mentorship. Of course, yeah. I have many questions on that, yeah. That's, that's a very interesting point. So indeed, when prior to Swissborg, 
And I, I had my own startup as well, so I created another startup, kind of the same, right, in the fintech field. And we had the chance to have um, almost 33,000 of traders, daily traders that, that were acting on the platform. And we had the chance, I had the chance to analyze that data. And among these uh, 33,000 traders, only a very small portion of them were profitable on the long term. So I asked myself, why, right? And what, what is the, is there a pattern for people to lose their money? Is there a pattern that traders do and that make them lose money? And why there is this very, and what this very small portion of people do that make them win money? And very, and, and, and it's crazy because then I, I, I download the, the entire data set and I start to analyze with Python code and I, you know, uh, look at different graphs and try to, to understand what is the main cause of these people losing money and what is the, the thinking behind, right? Because the graph would tell you something, then, but then you need some health of tea. You need to yourself be a trader that you can analyze, understand what is the root cause of this bad behavior. And what you observe is actually the people that do not earn money, when you look at their percentage rate, percentage rate of success, it is, it is extremely high. Which means that, for example, if you sample the, these people that at the end lose money, usually on 100 trades, 90% of their trades are positive. But the 10% make them lose money, a lot of money because they win a little on this 90% and they lose everything on one or two trades, right? So they make constant profit and all of a sudden they lose everything. <clears throat> and the other part, the other sample that is profitable actually is the opposite. They lose a little constantly, so maybe on 100 trades, they're gonna lose 80% of them, but there is few trades where they're gonna make a lot of money. And when you think about it, it's, it's normal, right? Because when you start to, so when you, when you enter a position and you start to earn money, you want to get out because you feel already pressure that maybe now you have something to lose. Mm -hmm. And when it's going down, when, so when it's against you, you always find excuses to say, it's gonna go back, right? Or so I'm gonna add more, well, I was unlucky or these kind of things. And I guess as well, it, it arises from the concept that when people start to trade, they want to, calibrate their winning on their own agenda. So because we have bills to pay every month, yeah. uh, we have, you know, we, we have in our society, the, the, the way the society is organized is with a very specific schedule. Yeah. You have to pay bills every month. You have to, you, you have pay a bunch of things. Year, exactly. Every two years or, exactly. So yeah. we have this kind, kind of requirement and we, we receive salary every month. So we are trained to think that way. I need to have an income every month. I need to have, a, to have this amount of income every year. So you, we think that way. And when people start to trade, they, they think, oh, now I want to win this amount of money every day. Yeah. I want to win this amount of uh, money every month. Every month yeah. And they start to behave this way. So when they reach a certain amount that they believe is good for them, they just cut out the position and they just forget that most of the time, mar the market spend his time in noise. You know, there is few moments in a year or even in longer cycle, maybe in 10 years, where there is true signal. Yeah. And a good illustration of that is if you take the S&P 500, for example, mm -hmm. it has been positive like almost every year, like <clears throat> a fair amount of percentage of year, maybe 70%. But if you remove the best five days of the S&P, when it's positive, usually it's neg the, the performance starts negative. Uh, so if you miss these you five, days, five days, you, 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 you know, you, you're not a profitable uh, uh, investor. And because we're ingrained, the brain is ingrained, like you said, to be in these habits, these daily, weekly, monthly, annually habits, then is that where people make the biggest mistakes? It's really, they, they have to be consistent where it's a market that is not linear. You told me about that yesterday, right? Non-linear It's not activity. linear because the, the, the amount of useful data that the market, the um, true signal that the market is giving is not linear. Like the amount of the true signal to true, true trend that you can find every day is not linear. Maybe every, 
for 10 days, the market will spend its time in noise with no uh, significant signal. And maybe after a month or after spending 30 days in noise, the trend will last for one, two, three days. And then again, in noise. And people believe when they trade the noise that they have something, but it's, it's, it's an illusion because with time, maybe, maybe you're going to be extremely lucky. That's the part as well that you need to manage and to be, it's extremely difficult because we are biased. But you need to take into account that you can be lucky for a long period of time. And maybe you, tr you are trading noise and you're still making money, but it's not going to last forever. Um, and most of the people, so they start to say, okay, I can make a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks every day. So um, I connect in the morning, I do my analysis, technical analysis, and I'm making my hundred bucks or a thousand bucks and then I run to my occupation. And they do that for sometimes a long period of time. But in one or two days, they're gonna lose everything. Because they try, to, um, they try to define what should be the clock of the market. They don't try to understand what is, the clock, what is actually the clock of the market. I know that myself, sometimes I'm building strategies that are gonna last for two years. I'm not gonna go out from my position for two years. So for example, I give you an example because of course the source of conviction can arise from different sources. I'm not specifically, for example, someone that is extremely uh, a specialist into technical analysis or this type of stuff. I believe in a very long-term trend and, 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 and you know, <clears throat> I have a more long-term to mid-term approach. So, for example, right now, I know that the, the market is extremely bearish when it's come to USD and quite positive when it's come to Euro. And I'm kind of the opposite. I think the euro will, will suffer a lot in the coming years. I don't know how long it will take, but I think the, the situation that we have experienced with COVID will impact dramatically the psychology of entrepreneur or economical agent in Europe. And as a result, the euro will suffer a lot. So then it's all about finding right tools. So is it simply going in the market, in the future market and short the euro dollar, or is it finding options, so then it's, it, it's you as a trader to find the good tools, right? But what I'm saying is, this is what I see as a trend, but I don't know when it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And if I want to say, this is my vision, and now I'm gonna earn this amount of money, like 100 bucks every day, yeah. most probably I'm not gonna earn money at the end. But if I say, when the market will be mature enough, maybe I will be wrong, but if I'm, if I'm right, when the market will be ready, then this is how I'm gonna, make money and maybe I will have to wait for a year or two years, but it doesn't matter because the few days after two years, the few days where the market will effectively materialize the move, like we've seen so recently with Bitcoin, right? Going from 20K to 40K, this is how you make your money, right? This is how you make your performance and then you can say, okay, now I've accumulated enough that I can run another strategy for two years and I'm gonna leave with this money that I've made uh, so far. So <clears throat> one of the biggest learning is from analyzing this set of data from 33,000 of, of traders that trade every day. So professional, non-professional is do not try to fit your own clock into the market, yeah. except that the market has its own clock. And it's, that, that's why you know, people are so fan of algorithm because the pressure that you get by not winning constantly every day is extremely high yeah. because this is, again, now not how we are raised. It's not how the society is built. But reality is if you want to become a very successful trader, usually the, the percentage rate of your, um, of your trades are extremely low because you will try to get the, the, the valuable signal and you will fail because most of the time yeah. it's noise. So noise makes you a profit, then a loss, a profit, small profit, some loss, or small loss, small loss, small loss. So you, you start to doubt yourself in the process. Um, I think Bitcoin is going to go up. You go, you, 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 you take a position and then you lose a bit of money because you're, you need to create asymmetry. You need to have, and asymmetry is the winning part of yeah. an, an investment we'll, we'll strategy. We'll that later, yeah. yeah. That's definitely what should... So you will take a very small risk and then you lose again, lose, again, lose. So you start to question yourself. Am I right, right? Because I keep losing money every day. Yeah. That's the opposite of 
the psychology that is winning money every, all the time. Yeah, and if I can just uh, like, I want to interject something because I find like that is exactly what it is because if you get bored, you know, and something is going sideways, very often people, because of this habit, this ingrained habit, you know, they're going to sell off a position and maybe two days later that position is going to moon just because they didn't have that patience, right? Often. They were expecting, you know, I wanted to take profits in one month or two months or my position was only six months. And very often it's happened to you, no? Where you just sell it off. You're like impatient. Okay, forget it. This, nothing's going to happen. Then all of a sudden, boom, to the moon. Of course, you know, because <laughs> it puts so much pressure. You know, the, one of the only, to be honest, one of the only position I have done that is Swissbox because I'm here, right? So yeah. sometimes I see what the market could not see. But when you have only a graph in front of you, it yeah. puts so much pressure on you, pressure, right? Yeah. That's why as well, you know, sometimes people say, I, I, I do believe only fundamental analysis, or I do believe only uh, technical analysis. But actually the two can be complementary yeah. because it gives you, you should never neglect the psychological part of investments. Yeah. And sometimes, even though you, you, technical analysis is extremely helpful when it's come to time, your position, reading news, meeting founders, going to conference, help you as well to get more confidence. And confidence is part of the process. You, sh you should not be blind and confident, but you should be aware and confident. You know what this reminds me of, Anthony? The chain of habit is too light until it's too heavy to be felt. Remember the quotes? Exactly. It's Warren Buffett, right? So I think that that quote seems to match well this situation, right? It's like when you get into such a bad habit of only aiming for months and daily and it gets ingrained, that's the danger. Maybe that's one of the dangers Warren Buffett's talking about, no? Exactly. And then you start to do not accept the rules. And as you say, you will keep constantly being in this habit and it's extremely hard to break. And especially because of the noise. Because the people that, for example, sometimes will sell you trade, uh, trading solution or training, this is what they're going to tell you. Are you going to make a monthly revenue of that much? Well, this is not true, right? That's a marketing argument. And the most difficult part of being a trader as well of an investment is not only the, the, the market itself have noise, but you are surrounded with noise as well, right? People that claim to be super profitable while you're not and you feel miserable. Yeah, and then the FOMO and all the bad you know, emotions that, yeah. And, and that's why I think maybe that's a subject we can touch on as well is being successful in investment start with knowing yourself. And because we, we, we quote people, one of the quotes that I like a lot is someone that say, what's the purpose of knowing, because Sometimes we always confuse knowledge and knowing, right? So knowledge comes from experience and knowing comes from observing or reading something. And you say, what's the purpose of knowing million people's life if you can experience yours? And that's, I think, as an investor as well, you should reflect on. So knowing yourself as a human helps you as well to decide what's the optimal investment strategy for me. Because maybe you, Alex, you're extremely profitable being a daily trader. By the way, I don't know many very profitable tra daily traders. It's extremely hard. But maybe you are, right? But maybe the pressure uh, that is, the, the daily pressure that a, a daily trader feels is too much for me. So I'm never gonna make money, that's for sure. Right, so I need to know myself who I am in order then to calibrate the strategy that I can feel very feel comfortable with. Will I feel moment of doubt, pressure, anger? Of course, but not to the breaking point where you make a dumb decision, right? You make a dumb decision, yes. So like, what are, how could we do that? So you're kind of saying that those bad habits are the ultimate killer, you know, for, for a trader. And it makes a lot of sense, you know, when you're, we, actually we should connect to uh, poker as well and, and, and you should tell me about the psychology of a poker big player because for those watching out there, Anthony, every time we play poker at Swiss Borg, <laughs> he just takes everyone's money, he doesn't care. He's a really nice guy, but when he plays poker, he's terrible. <laughs> so uh, you're very good at poker, you have uh, great experience in investment and good, exp you know, good outcomes in investment. Um, but this, yeah, it really brings me back to uh, you were talking about nonlinear activity, so the poor habits, then the inner discovery, understanding oneself. Like, but how do we do that though? Like, it, it, I know it's a very difficult question, but you know, how can I really realize 
discover myself as an investor and then not have to go through these non-linear habits that we talked about? It's a process, right? So I guess sometimes you need to be the observer as well. So you should not be you, but someone that observes yourself, right? And, and try to, to come very openly about what you, you feel is not right. And I guess what you learn as well being in your daily life, interacting with other people in your job, can reflect on your investment strategy. So the more you're true to yourself, the more you, you match who you are, the better investor you will become, yeah. right? And I think one of the best example, I have two very good examples. First of all, of course, coming from a traditional uh, investment and, and banking, I have many friends that still work that wish <laughs> to have trust Bitcoin and especially Swiss bank token before, right? But uh, they haven't. So, and they still work you know, for banks and they are investment manager, they are private banker and they advise and they invest a lot of money. But do you know how much, what's the percentage of them that actually for their own portfolio do the same thing as they do for their job? None of them. Right? I know well, every time I ask people, you know, my friend, That's really bad. you know, how much money did you make for, uh, uh, what was your performance last year? What was the, you know, the best uh, uh, mandate that you have? And what was, what's the, the, the part that you are the most proud of? You say, you know, my hand are tied and, and, you know, I'm not doing really what I believe in and, and the performance is terrible. Yeah. And, uh, but do you inv and it has, but do you, have you, your money invested with your own? Oh, I don't know, right? So that's the first example that you need to try, even investment manager, the one that are professional, um, when they not, so they, they follow rules that are dictated by a system, but not their system yeah. and they don't trust the rules, so they, they don't invest. So the first indication, even professional, in banks, in invest, hedge funds are different because the hedge fund guy put their own money and they play with their own rules. That's, that's why hedge funds usually are, mm, mm, the performance is amazing as opposed to banks and etc. But that provide a service of investment, but no conviction. The second example is, it's very funny because most of the retail investor so the one that are in love with a company or a project such as Swissbor or Tesla or the people are in love with Bitcoin, over the course of the past five years, all of them have made amazing performance <laughs> relative to professional. Much better than the professional. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm pretty sure if you take the average Robinhood investor, and made much more performance than Warren Buffett over the five years, over the past five years. And the reason why is because beside the literature or the, you know, the training, all these things, these people are much more connected to who they are because they say, I believe in this company. I think that's the future. And value arise from a belief system anyway, right? 